Alrighty, hey, what's up you guys? Gavin here. Uh, today we're going to be talking about a exemplary album. The album we're looking at today is Carter 3 by Lil Wayne. Yes. Alrighty, so the first thing we're talking about uh, are my first impressions of the album. Um, um, so my first impressions uh, stem from basically stumbling upon this album. Uh, I know I definitely wanted to do a Lil Wayne review. Um, the hip-hop scene right now is just crazy. And like, there's a huge rise in rappers right now, so pretty much I just kind of wanted to do a deep dive in some of my favorite rappers and hip hop artists um, from the last decade uh, or so. Um, starting with Lil Wayne because that's kind of like where the, uh, in my opinion, where I kind of dove headfirst into hip hop myself. Like, just the scene for hip hop right now is massive, right? Um, I mean, not just ma not just hip hop. We're talking about even like subgenres. We're talking about rap, you know, SoundCloud rap, trap, uh, like goth rap or whatever. Something kind of like on the similarity, uh, similar to like uh, Lil Peep or something, right? This album was very sexual. Lil Wayne is a very sexual rapper. Um, uh, I think that has a lot to do with. Like, the fact that maybe because he's a Libra, <laughs> I don't know. Um, I know him and Drake, every time that we get on, like, a, a, any any kind of album, or not album, but, like, track or something, we just kind of relatively head in that direction, which is cool. Um, especially back in the day, I think it was, like, a, it was like a 2000s type of thing, just as being kind of crazy sexual and stuff. Um... Yeah, so it was like really upbeat. Um, definitely had like that two thousands vibe to it. Uh, if you've ever heard like hip hop from like two thousands and stuff, it's a lot. It was like a lot of like a uh, young, who was it? Young Money, Young Money. I mean, yeah, like Nicki Minaj, Drake, um, even like Chris Brown. Um, hip hop had like a really big dancey type of vibe at the time uh it wasn't just like oh we're gonna hip hop and rap like now where it's just strictly like you know very it's very like you can tell that it's part of the sub it's definitely a subgenre of the hip hop it's not really just like an influence of some sort you know i feel like back in the day it was just like you had to appeal to the pop uh side of like the music industry and like scene and stuff Especially if you wanted to make it to the radio, right? It was like, oh, <clears throat> if I don't have this, like, pop, like, dancey, electronic aspect to my songs, then, like, there's not really, like, a market or something or, like, you know, falling for that um, at the time. Especially because, like, it's not to say that it was racist, because that's not fair necessarily, but it also wasn't, like, open-minded either. Um, it was very, it was a little bit whitewashed in the sense, um, that doesn't mean that that was a bad thing, because to be honest, I don't see it nowadays, and it makes me a little sad. Um, I, I don't know why, I don't think, I don't know if it would come back, because you're talking about, like, Chameleonaire and, like, Charlemagne, like, hip-hop that was just, like, you know, it was, it was groovy, and, like, it talked, I mean, they talked about money, and you hear that nowadays, but, like, Typically, I feel like rap nowadays is more violent, and like, like, it's very stereotypical, <laughs> and like, it's led by, you know, people who, um, <clears throat> are coming up and out of like, maybe, grungier places and stuff, um, it, I feel like SoundCloud rap, and like, I keep bringing a little peep up, because, I mean, he was such—he's such a big deal, young lean and stuff. Um, like his was like—I think he sampled a lot of like songs from like Nirvana and, and like Kurt Cobain and stuff. So that was, you know, that grunge aspect, right? And it's very—it's very embedded in a lot of culture in general, you know. I mean, Kurt Cobain was a crazy influential person, like crazy influential. Like we're talking. 20 years into the future and this guy still has a heavy heavy influence and just a, a, a 
for being um, not alive, the guy has a lot of say in a lot of stuff. I don't know if that's even relative to anything or anyone, but yeah. So, um, basically, fucking Lil Wayne. <clears throat> also, Carter 3 was such the album. <laughs> like, I think like four hits was off this album. I mean, you have a Millie, you know, uh, Got Money, Miss Officer, uh, freaking Lollipop. Just crazy, crazy songs. Lil Wayne is like crazy known for these songs. Um, and if you hear them, like, you'll know. <clears throat> You're like, oh, yeah, yeah, that song was like massive for probably charted for like three weeks and stuff. Because, you know, his influence, Drake, I mean, this was kind of like the platform for Drake. Uh, and also, I think not only was it a platform for Drake and who he is now, but it was also like, the peak of Drake's like best fucking raps in general. Um, Jesus, you should check out some of those those albums, man. I'll probably go into them. I think I reviewed some of them. Uh, I'll probably link it in the bio or something. Carter Three, I feel like was such an epitome for Lil Wayne. I mean, I don't think it was like necessarily the album album, but maybe it was you know top three, you know. Um, so yeah, there was also like some really cool features, uh, Jay-Z, Kanye, um, Fabulous, and Busta Rhymes, uh, so like, with those four, you can really kind of tell, kind of get the vibe of what this album might be like, um, usually you see those kind of features when you have like a hype, hip-hop, rap, I mean, you're gonna hear, you know, bars about money, you're gonna hear bars about, you know, making it, you're gonna hear bars about you know smashing lots of chicks and you know just being the greatest you know the goat uh, of all rappers and stuff and that's uh kind of why I, I really like this album and just this uh this era of hip-hop you know i know that like uh we still have like people like migos um you know obviously like drake uh he kind of dabbles i think in, in stuff like that uh another one Another one. Why am I blanking on DJ Khaled? DJ Khaled. DJ Khaled. DJ fucking Khaled. I have to tell you, I think he's the only person left out of that era, truly, who is kind of keeping things. I mean, Migos. Last time I heard, to be honest, last time I heard about Migos is that they're actually beefing. So what the, f like I, I don't really want this era to just disappear or anything because like wh who's i like i get it you know rap should be a way to like you know relieve yourself and you know all that stuff and that's perfect but i also need there to be rappers who rap about like positive stuff and you know making a bunch of money and you know just all that stuff because like it's a it's, it's a positive thing you know sometimes Sometimes when I'm like listening to rap that's kind of depressing or like upsetting or just just violent, it just kind of puts me in a bad mood or like it makes me feel like sad and like I don't want to always feel like that, you know? I want there to be a part of rap that's like uh, motivating and inspiring and stuff. Uh, I know this song, this Lil Wayne and you know, even on this album, like it's very sexual and like it's kind of vulgar and stuff like that but like overall it's positive and it's fun and it's just like it, it, it's motivating and it keeps you like you know you feel like a you feel like a fucking boss you know every time i listen to a Lil wayne song i'm like i feel like i, I you know i'm coming out the club you know walking out with like two dimes you, you know just made a bunch of money about to smoke a bunch of weed like it just it's it's I don't know. I think it, it, it's just a it's a good thing, and I don't see it as often. And if this if this honestly makes Lil Wayne make more music, by all means, because I I I'm, I want to be inspired again, and I would love to hear more. Anyways, let's go over some lyrics, right? Okay, then kind of kind of get a taste of what we're working with. So the song that I'm looking up is Doctor Carter. Um, 
basically it starts off good morning dr carter and then his part because it goes in between like this one lady and lil wayne so i'm gonna yeah so it starts off good morning dr carter and then lil wayne goes hey sweetie and then he goes into look looks like it's going to be a long day and another one <laughs> that's what lil wayne says and then she she continues your first patient is suffering from a lack of concept, originality, his flow is weak, <laughs> and he has no style. So he's kind of like dissing, you know, uh, I guess, chump rappers or whatever. I think that's like a common thing. Um, I think not only in just rap, I think just in sports, you know, dudes. Yes, competition can be kind of toxic sometimes, but it's also like, kind of motivating and it's kind of like a little bit like a nudge or like you know just kind of teasing and stuff right so in this song's particular Lil Wayne kind of teases that maybe like you know maybe goofy rappers or you know artists that are maybe not trying hard enough or maybe trying too hard you know some it's kind of just like a nudge at that right and uh it continues what you got for him and then it says uh okay let me put my gloves on all my scrubs on dr carter to the rescue excuse me if i'm late so i guess he's gonna basically kind of like influence or motivate or kind of just like inspire something into these rappers that you know either are just you know maybe not making a splash or whatever right and then it goes uh but like a thief it takes time to be this great ha so just wait your style is a disgrace your rhymes are fifth place and i'm just grace so then he kind of goes back into teasing and, you know, stuff like that. Uh, one, uno, ace, and I'm trying to make your heart beat like bass, but you're sweet like cake and I come to fix. Whatever you shall break, where's your originality? You are so fake, so picture me like a galley. Capture what I say, all I need is one mic, all I need is one take. Like hay brighter than the sun rays, got a pistol on the playground. Um... Watch the gun play like, no kidding, no kids in the room. But the kids do watch, gotta watch what we say, gotta work every day. Gotta not be cliche, gotta stand up like Andre 3K, gotta kick it, kick it like a sensei. You gotta have faith, you gotta, gotta wait, wait. I think, I think I lost someone, right? Because the, if you listen to the song, it's basically in the point of view of him from like a doctor, right? He's in a doctor's office or like, a surgical room or something and like uh it's really unique and like kind of a cool listen i have basing the rap around something it's basing the rap not just about just oh i'm gonna you know spit and see whatever comes to mind type of thing which is cool and it's good and like so you, you know there's really talented rappers out there who can just naturally just like just keep like flowing and just put out these crazy bars off the top of their head in like you know four or five seconds right that's that's a very that's a very that's a different type of talent this is kind of like imagery this is kind of poetic and it's more of like the um because i feel like when you do the like fast rapping and like off the dome it's more of like a rhythm type of thing that's more of like rhythm i mean it's definitely poetry for sure you know, but it's a different type, it's a different realm of, like, what makes that talenting. You imagine, it makes you think, it, it puts you in a different place, you know, which is kind of cool, and, uh, originality, in, in some sense. Alrighty, so we're gonna talk about my favorite song off this album. Um, basically, I think my favorite song is probably gonna be either between a Millie, uh, or Got Money. Um, <clears throat> specifically those songs because... Uh, one, they're two of his biggest hits, um, they're so fun, so upbeat, and they're like, you know, talk about money and stuff, and you're like, uh, I don't know if, you know, you're part of hustle culture, or if you're like, you have a dream or something, but like, when it comes to, you know, money and dreams and like, making it and stuff, you want to be surrounded by this type of energy, you know, you want to be listening to songs. Where they talk about making a million dollars and you know having money for caviar and drinks and dinners and stuff because not only will it motivate you but it will literally manifest 
into your life if you just, you know, surround yourself with good things and positive stuff. So it's just like, yeah, uh, I'm I'm a YouTuber trying to make it on YouTube in an era where everybody's trying to make it on every freaking streaming media known to man. You know, every social site, somebody's trying to fucking make it, right? So it's just like, you gotta, you gotta fucking stay positive. You gotta fucking put your money where your mouth is, I don't know. Uh, so, like, listening to songs like Got Money and Emily, I'm just like, yeah, no, nah, this is the energy that I put into this, these projects that's gonna, that's gonna make me money. That's gonna, you know, stuff like that, you know, it's just like um they rap about it because that's what they want to secure in their life is like having money and being able to have a good time whenever they want stuff like that it's like uh not to be freaking nationalist or whatever or too uh, patriotic but like see the american dream right it's just making it making a lot of money and like having the power and i guess autonomy to do whatever the hell you want Alrighty, so to rate this album, I'll probably give it, I'll give it like a four. I'll give it like a four out of five, by the way. My rating is from uh, one through five. Uh, Lil Wayne is just like, such like a comfort for me. Um, I have so many songs on the top of my head that I like by Lil Wayne. And, you know, Young Money, I tie him in with Young Money so much that like, even, even I can consider him even like part of OVO a little bit. Like, it's just all wrapped up. And so like, when I think of Lil Wayne, I think, you know, some of my favorite freaking songs and some of my favorite artists and rappers, stuff like that. So it, it it's kind of, I'm a little bit biased. I'm a little bit biased. But yeah, Lil Wayne's, um, this is going to get a four. And also, I might even make it 4.5 just because... A lot of his hits were off of this album. I mean, you're talking about a Millie, Got Money, Miss Officer, Lollipop. I mean, come on. Lollipop even even made it to, like, the freaking, um, like, metal and, like, screamo scene. Like, to continue on the rating, um, 4 to 4.5, because Lil Wayne and, like, uh, this was just, this album made... I mean, it was had so many bangers and so many like uh, hits off of this album that it has to it has to fall into like a high category, uh, just because of the I guess <clears throat> the reputation that this album kind of had and has uh, to this day. Alrighty, guys, if you like this video, give it a big thumbs up. If you have any other suggestions for movies, music, games alike, leave them in the comment section. I'll be sure to check them out. Feel free to drop any suggestion anything i mean even like topics i could don't forget to subscribe peace